lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, my name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back. As I promised you guys, 2024, I'm going to be very much more proactive on my YouTube channel. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. We have tons of spell videos as well as how to as well as tarot readings. As you guys can see here, we have the tarot deck and we have a few oracle cards that we're going to be using for this reading. Now, this reading is going to be, for those of you guys that are interested or wanting to know what your person or the person that you're dealing with, what is their intentions? What is it that they want from you? So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes so that you can choose the decks that will be displayed in a bit and we'll go from there. All right, my lovelies, here we are. As you guys can see, we have all the sets placed. We are going to begin here with set number one, which is the pink highlighter or marker. We're going to go then to second set, which is the highlighter, yellow. Then we're gonna go to the third set, which is green. And we're gonna go finally to the fourth one, orange. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes so that you can tune in so that you can listen to your intuition and see which one you're guided to so that we can reveal what your person's intentions and what it is that they want from you so i'll give you guys a couple of minutes crazy because i just had lit the candle and you can see it's beginning to create a heart shape there very interesting all right so i'll give you guys a couple of minutes so you can tune in and uh, pick your pile All right, my lovelies, here we are. We're gonna begin with set number one, the pink marker. So let's get on with it. Those of you guys that chose this set, let's get into your reading, okay? So the first card we have here is the seven of pentacles, the three of swords representing both energy and the two of swords representing your energy. So as you guys can see here on the left side, it's their energy, your energy on the right, and at the center, it is the blockage, basically. So what I'm seeing here is, for a lot of you guys that chose set number one, I feel like one of you guys could be extremely guarded, and I feel like this is you, um, because we have the two of swords here. So the two of swords indicates being a bit reserved or being a bit guarded when it comes to this connection. The three of swords right at the center can symbolize that perhaps you've dealt with this person or you have been dealing with this person for quite a while. There could have been some cheating involved or some type of betrayal there. I do see them wanting to uh, put effort into this connection or uh, rekindling this connection with the seven of pentacles indicating being able or at this point being able to or willing to put in the effort um, and it could be them reminiscing about the reason why your guardian could potentially be because they could have let you down they could have taken you for granted or perhaps there was some type of separation involved in this situation um, but what i am seeing is I'm going to be completely honest. I feel like there is a lot of healing that needs to happen for those of you guys that chose this set. Now, if the person that you're dealing with is not the one who betrayed you, then you can be carrying this type of energy. And that's the reason why you're very guarded. This could be the reason why uh, you're not open. You're not ready. I'm going to, you know, go out on a whim here. You're not ready to emotionally open up. Um, I feel like there is a lot of healing that still needs to happen. The Two of Swords does carry a lot of emotional energy, although it's swords because there is an ocean in the background. So again, I feel like you haven't fully recovered from some type of betrayal or some type of um, hurt and pain that you've gone through. Um, and this person is, you know, willing to put in work. I feel like they may be feeling a bit frustrated with you or they may be feeling a bit frustrated with this connection because I feel like they are trying the best they can to kind of work through this. Or uh, for others of you, if this is not the person that did that to you or put you in that position, they can feel frustrated in regards to, well, why do I have to put in more work when I wasn't the one that hurt this person, hurt you, meaning 
Um, so again, I feel like there is a blockage in this connection. Now we're going to look at the Oracle cards here. And the first card that we have here is past life. Because it's at the center, I feel like for a lot of you guys that chose the set, the person that if you're currently dealing with this person and this person was with you in a relationship or in the past, there was some type of betrayal. I feel like there's a past life connection here and it, it could be potentially the reason why it's so difficult for you to move on. And it could be the the energy of trying to work it through or work through it. Um but you're still very guarded and you're still very much protecting your heart because you're still hurt. For those of you guys that chose this and the person that you're dealing with is in fact the one that hurt you or betrayed you or there was cheating involved, I feel like you're dealing more with a karmic uh, and that could be the reason why it's so difficult for you to move on or let go of this connection. Uh, for others of you, if you are dealing with someone new and like I said, they are trying to put some type of effort but you at this moment are guarded. I feel like the reason why it's so hard for you to overcome the past relationship, it could have been a karmic and usually karmic connections are very difficult. Um, they are usually misunderstood. A lot of people confuse them with soulmate connections. Um, but a karmic is actually a relationship that becomes, it starts out very strongly, very intensely, but it bec it usually becomes very toxic. And the reason for that is because it is a karmic. It is a lesson that you need to learn or that you need to experience in order for you to be able to evolve. And it usually indicates some type of self-love or learning how to choose ourselves, that type of energy. So I feel like if this is a, a person that you're currently dealing with that didn't create this hurt for you or this trauma, the reason why you're still holding on to the past is because that person could have been a karmic connection. Now, the next card we have here is cancer. You could be dealing with a cancer or the person that could have put you through the ringer or basically put you through this difficult situation. Maybe a cancer doesn't have to be their sun, could be their rising. For others of you, you could you yourself could be a cancer or they can be telling you that you need to embrace more of the cancer energy, the evolved one. Again, you know, cancers are very methodical when it comes to emotions, especially when they've been hurt, they've been, they've gone through it. There's a lot of healing that happens, but before that healing happens, you kind of, you know, they kind of go within the shell. So I feel like for some of you guys, what they're telling you is take a little bit of time for yourself so that you can heal through this. So you don't carry this type of energy into your next connection or into your next, um, love interest now the next card that i have here is i'm testing your limits so again if you are dealing with a karmic connection if you are dealing with someone that has let you down in the past uh or someone that uh could potentially uh betrayed you or really really hurt you i feel like what is coming to mind also cancer does rule the fourth house so this could be a person that you are or perhaps were in a committed relationship. Maybe you guys were living together. Um, and the reason why this card, I'm testing your limits, is coming up again, very much karmic connection. Um, why? Because it, this is why the karmic shows up in our life. Because they want to push our limits. They want to test us in the sense of having or learning to have the courage and the strength to choose ourselves and walk away from what doesn't serve us. So again, for those of you guys that chose set number one, I feel like if you are dealing with this person, I think that you're better off giving yourself some time. Don't try to rush into the connection again. Try to heal uh, and always keeping in mind that if the people that we choose to deal with or to date or to love um, is not reciprocating our energy and they haven't done that. And let's say they've let us down a few times. Um, humans are creatures of habit. So more than likely, it will be very difficult for that person to change their nature. So my advice would be to move along or keep it pushing. If you are dealing with a new person and you have dealt with this in the past and you're still caring, not getting over the X or still maybe even dealing with them, they are just trying to uh, push your limits. They're trying to come back into your life. They're trying to interrupt what you have going. So again, 
my advice on that situation is be honest with yourself. If you see that there is value in this new person that you're dealing with, which with the seven of pentacles would indicate they're willing to put in the work, my advice is take some time to yourself to heal, um, but not completely push them out of your life. If this is a person that genuinely has interest in you, they will be willing to put in the work, meaning they'll be willing to wait on you. All right, my lovelies. All right, moving on. Let's go to the next set here. <clears throat> We're going to go with set number two, the yellow highlighter here. Let's see what this person you're dealing with. <clears throat> All right, so we have here the two of wands representing their energy, uh, the judgment card right at the center, and the three of wands. So I feel those of you guys that chose this connection or this set, set number two, for some of you guys, there may be some distancing. For others of you, you may de be dealing with a situation where perhaps there's a lot of miscommunication only because it's really difficult for you guys to be on the same page. I'm going to be honest, for some of you guys, it could be that there was recent a recent decision of either pulling away from each other because what's really standing out in this reading is that the two of wands and the three of wands are giving each other their backs. So, um, and right at the center, the judgment, the decision that was made, um, the two of wands does indicate that they do look into the future or wonder what it would be like in the future with you guys or this connection. But because I see the three of wands here, I feel like you've already moved from that energy. So those of you guys that chose set number two could be that emotionally you just you're not feeling it. Um, for some of you guys, you're wondering, is this person the right person for me? Um, and you're like, really, I feel like you, uh, for those of you guys that chose this set, I feel like most of you guys are probably kind of just curious about how far this connection can go. But I don't feel that there is a mutual desire to make this relationship something. Um, I feel like they are in a different place. I feel like they are looking definitely towards the future, but this can also represent, because it is wants, it can represent that they may be looking into their options as well as, like I said, the, the two of wands and the three of wands are kind of giving each other their back. And with you, the three of wands, it, you've already moved from that stage, from that energy of the two of wands. And I feel like for some of you guys, if you're still dealing with them, I feel like you're going to be deciding to pull the plug. Um, you may find a better a better connection or a more deeper connection where you're going to be led um, towards a very different path, especially because judgment is right at the center here. Now, the Oracle card that we have here is rumors. For some of you guys, um, that could have been what created a lot of the tension in this connection, or that could have been the reason why you guys kind of fell apart, or slowly but surely for some of you guys, if you're resonating with this, I feel like you have noticed gradually that you guys are becoming much more distant towards each other. And it could be because there's rumors involved, or it could be because people around you guys are kind of you know conspiring or speaking against the partner and their partner i mean their friends speaking against you uh, it could be that you feel like there was a lot of you know hearsay a lot of noise going on um but for some of you guys i could feel that there could have been some type of rumor that came up that could have created some type of tension primarily what i'm sensing could be a rumor about your past or a rumor about their past that created the distancing or what began as the distancing for both of you. Now, the next card that we have here is Scorpio energy here. For some of you guys, you could be dealing with the Scorpio. For others of you, you could be a Scorpio or the person is ruled with water energy or plutonium energy. Um, what I'm seeing here is Scorpio is the representation of everything that has to do with depthness with you know the heavy energy in life which is uh, life and transformation meaning death uh, a lot of changes so i feel like for some of you guys if they're not a scorpio you could be a rising virgo um 
And, and, and what this is indicating to me with the Scorpio energy, it could indicate the Pluto energy. Like I said, we are currently going through a transit. So I feel like what you thought you wanted at some point is going to gradually be changing. And it could be that you yourself outgrow this connection, my loves. The next card that we have here is sex with your ex. Um, okay, so if there was a rumor connected to them entertaining an ex or dealing with an ex, more than likely that's what created the distancing and the validation here is yes they are dealing or they have been dealing with the person from their past um this could be you as well it's a general reading so take it how it resonates but they are indicating here that there is definitely a next you know an x that is floating around their energy or floating around your energy that created the change in what you thought you wanted or the change that they thought they wanted and it turned out that they wanted something else so that could be the reason the advice here on this situation is if you feel like you're the one that's outgrown this connection or you feel like uh you feel you're at crossroads right now because maybe you're still dealing with an ex um i feel like both of you guys as time progresses it will gradually you guys will gradually decide to take your own separate ways I don't see this actually, you know, fermenting or becoming anything stable. I, I'm going to be honest. I feel like there is a lot of people involved in this situation, especially because of the rumors and the X card. So uh, keep it pushing, my loves. All right, moving on here. Let's see what set number three tells us here, which is the green lighter. Lighter, highlighter. All right, we have, oof, major potential alert. All right, my love, so we have the Ace of Pentacles, the Star card, and the Ace of Swords. So when it comes to what they're wanting from you, they are definitely looking towards you as something that could potentially become very long-term. With the Ace of Pentacles, this is even like the promise for, uh, for it to, you know, become something uh, of a higher level type of commitment, especially with the star card right at the center. So the star card does indicate that our current birth chart uh, could be having a lot of wild, <laughs> a lot of wild, um, a lot of wild highlighting. Uh, could be Pluto's energy in Aquarius for some of you. You could be dealing with an Aquarius. You could be an Aquarius or Pluto's energy wherever you have that in your chart is really you know highlighting relationships and partnerships for you guys so again like i said the ace of pentacles they're wanting something serious they're wanting commitment could be a person that may be a bit reserved um but it's definitely someone that takes their time they gradually get into um a higher commitment so what i mean by that is it's not a person that is going to completely commit to you out of the blue or very quickly it's a person that's very methodical when it comes to dealing with people in relationships but i do see it progressing into the understanding that they that you are exactly what they're looking for especially with the star card the star card usually indicates they are kind of like um what's the word i'm looking for they become very um starstruck uh they find in you exactly the partner that they ever envisioned or that they hoped or that they manifested and here with your energy ace of swords could be that you find in them their stability their level-headedness their you know they may take themselves a bit serious but it's a person that definitely put has a lot of weight in their you know how they present themselves to the world and with the ace of swords you could be a person that is very cutthroat very blunt very you don't hold back when it comes to speaking up and stuff like that and this is something that they definitely admire in you now with the oracle cards here we have differences so again we do have the ace of pentacles and the ace of swords which are two very different energies Ace of Pentacles, uh, very goal oriented. This is a person that thinks longevity, that thinks, is this beneficial for me right now? But more so, is it going to benefit me down the road, you know, in the future? Ace of Swords is very quick. It's very, you know, it's air energy. So again, you guys may be very different. You guys may actually have different backgrounds. You, this person could be definitely someone that perhaps you're not accustomed to or someone that's very, 
different from what you're used to. But it doesn't mean that it's not a good thing. Again, we definitely see that it is a beautiful type of exchange of energy. Could be that perhaps you are not necessarily, um, as an example, it's coming to mind, you could be very sporadic, you could be very um, all over the place, <laughs> not in a negative sense, but you, you know, you, your mind is very fast. It's very, and this person could be like very clean, clean, um, very clean, very organized, very, you know, very different. Um, even the way you guys speak, this could, this could be a person that speaks very, they, it's kind of giving me the energy where they don't necessarily show emotion, but they show you through actions. Whereas you, you're like, I want to hear it, or I'm definitely feeling them. You let them know that type of energy. But again, I feel like this is what's really drawing you guys in, that you guys could potentially be very different, um, but you guys kind of balance each other out. Now, the next card that we have here is <laughs> Venus energy, which is obviously Venusian energy. This is the planet of love. So I feel that your differences is something that could definitely that's probably what caught each other's eye, um, that you guys are so different, but yet somehow there's a connection and somehow it just works. If this is a very new connection, give it a little bit of time. You're going to be very surprised because I feel like you guys are going to become very much in sync. Now, the next card is please me, tease me. <laughs> so again, I feel like because you guys are very opposites, when it comes to the connection, the physical connection, you guys are going to be very much in sync, especially because you have Venus energy here. So I feel like though you guys may be very different in element, um, your Venuses could be very synced. So it could be that your uh, Venus is in a very good place that balances out their Venus. And keep in mind when we talk about uh, the planet of Venus, wherever it's sitting in our chart, in our birth chart, it basically speaks about the need, how we need to be loved. So again, I feel like both of you guys as Venus definitely balance each other out. And that could be why you guys have a very uh, crazy connection or will have a very crazy connection, especially when it comes to the physical. <laughs> All right, my lovelies, beautiful reading here. Moving on, let's see what we can expect here with the final set. If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment, let me know so that I can continue giving these readings to you guys. All right, set number three. Here we go. We have the Seven of Cups, the Queen of Cups, and the Knight of Cups. Okay, so I'm going to be honest. I feel for those of you guys that chose set number four. When it comes to what they want or what they're expecting from you, I feel like you're dealing with a very someone that's definitely not not looking for any type of commitment this is a person that really embraces uh having options and i feel like you're not the only one that they're speaking to or that they're talking to what's showing up here at the center is the queen of cups so unless you're a water sign i feel like uh the reason why this person has a tendency and for some of you guys you may be dealing with a commitment phobe um but the reason for this is because they are caring a energy of someone from their past that meant a lot and perhaps let them down. And that could be the reason why uh, Queen of Cups can also represent in the negative aspect. It could represent a person that indulges a little too much, especially resonating with the Seven of Cups here. Your energy here is the Knight of Cups. I feel like, I'm going to be honest, I feel like you guys are really wanting to find love and that's not necessarily a negative thing. It's a beautiful thing, right? But I want you guys to be really careful about entertaining just anyone that gives you attention, my loves. You guys deserve better than that. And what I mean by that is with the Knight of Cups, I feel like you can see here that you are in search, right? You're moving along. You are determined to find love. The negative aspect of that is that it's a knight, so it's still immature emotional energy. 
I feel like you have the potential when dealing with toxic energies to get emotionally manipulated. So if you are dealing with someone that ghosts you or someone that doesn't text you and then out of three, four days they pop up and they just continue the conversation like if they weren't gone for those four days or three days, I feel that this is a big red flag. And what they're telling you here is um, give yourself the time to decide exactly what it is that you want in a partner and what it is exactly that, or how it is exactly that you want to be treated. Knowing and having a very clear crystallized idea of the type of partner that you're drawing in helps us kind of weed out the ones that just don't fit the mark, the ones that just don't step up or the ones that just are not giving us what we want. When you're clear and concise about what you're looking for and what you want, um, like I said, it helps you weed out the ones that are not really trying or not really putting effort. With the Seven of Cups and Queen of Cups, very much energy of I'm selling you a dream. So if this connection felt in the very beginning like it was too good to be real or too good to be true, but now you're emotionally invested in it and they're you're kind of allowing them to play you, whether it's play you with like promises that they just don't come through with or that they, like I said, disappear and then later on reach out, the hot and cold plane type of shit. Yeah, it, they know exactly what they're doing. So my advice is keep it pushing because I don't see that this connection is even good or healthy for you. I feel this is a person that is very emotionally manipulative. Now, the next card that we have here, um, when it comes to the Oracle cards, we have Cupid. So again, I feel that this is a person that is very flirtatious. This is a person that knows exactly what they're doing. This is a person that has a history of playing hot and cold only because it's kind of like throwing the bait and then you take it. And once they see that you've taken the bait, once they've seen that you are definitely willing to put in effort in this connection and put up basically with their bullshit, they know they have you hooked. So they, again, like I said, they play that hot and cold type of shit playing with your mind and your emotions only because they know that that it's a bit of narcissistic type of energy that I'm getting here. Now, the next card that we have is exactly the next card that we have here is third house. Third house is all to do with communication. You guys, this is a person that uses communication in order to make people fall in love with them. So they definitely know what they're doing. This is like a player. This is like a fuck boy, fuck girl type of energy. This is someone that has la via. Okay, we Mexicans say la via or those of you guys that speak Spanish, you know what la via is, right? It is a person that is a fucking sweet talker and they love to sweet talk and sell you a fucking dream. And then once you buy it, once you take that bait, they just disappear and then they come back around and then they have you in that, you know, hot and cold type of energy because they know that's the only way they can manipulate you the more they ghost you or the more they create distance the more desire in your mind becomes stronger to want to chase them to want to put up with their nonsense basically the next card that we have here is let's make love in the moonlight again very romantic type of energy however because of the third house here the seven of cups and the queen of cups i feel that this is a person that is just they're not good they're not good you know it's not good news this is a person that is very much and you know what i'm going to be honest you guys this is giving me because of cupid and third house with let's make love which is the complete opposite of this energy and cupid right you would think romantic but Cupid also speaks about a person that has mastered seduction. It's giving me very much the energy of, um, what is it called? That book from Green. Um, not the, the 48 Laws of Power, but the other one of seduction. That's very much giving me that type of energy. This person is a person that knows exactly what to do, what to say, um, even, you know, speaking and let's make love, even though they have no understanding of what true love means. Um, it's a person that says love very loosely for some of you guys. It could even be that within a week that you're dealing with them, they were already talking about falling for you and that type of shit. Why? Because they're very good with, you know, uh, sweet talking people. So my advice is keep it pushing. This is not good energy and you definitely deserve better, babe. 
All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I hope it gives you some type of clarity, some type of insight. If you do, if you do like these readings, like, comment, follow. Let me know in the comment section so that I can continue bringing these to you guys. If you guys are interested in any of the services that we provide, any type of spell work or any type of um, readings, all of that, you can find all of that on our description link below. All right, my lovelies, I will see you guys soon. Hope you guys enjoyed and we'll talk soon. Bye.